Tottenham are the real deal. But really, that is an unforgivable mistake from Arsenal and they really should be doing so much better. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Zeko Football Channel. The North London Derby has just finished. Arsenal have played Tottenham to a 2-2 draw and we're going to be going through everything that we have learned from this game. If you're new to the channel, please make sure that you subscribe, you like the video and you turn on those notifications. Right, let's get into it because there's so much to talk about when we look at this match. We have Arsenal, Tottenham, Arsenal at home, Tottenham really starting to bed themselves in. And if there's the first takeaway that we need to take from this is that Tottenham are the real deal. The way they've come to the Emirates, the pressure on them, the idea of Ange Ball, the way that they want to play. And I thought they held their own perfectly. As you can see from the attacking momentum bar, it was very 50-50. I thought that overall Arsenal, yes, dominated the first half, but Tottenham really came back into it in the second half. And that's another thing that I want to mention. Tottenham don't fade in matches anymore. They do a very good job of maintaining the momentum throughout extensive periods of of a game especially when they're under the cosh a little bit especially when they don't have the ball they are able to be defensively sound but at the same time they're able to take the sting out of a match by holding on to possession and i thought they did a very good job of that especially with james madison dropping that little bit deeper we do need to mention some of the injuries Declan rice coming off fabio vera obviously being changed for kai havertz but really the first two goals in this match one i thought was quite fortuitous for arsenal yes Bakayo Saka does a very good good job of cutting inside we'll go on to that a little bit later but really the second goal for tottenham was pure brilliance we talked about those diagonal movements from you know, the likes of human son from james madison through into the final third areas and then that pass from madison from the byline was brilliant again we'll talk about that in just a moment let's have a look at some of the average positions because there are a couple of things that we need to mention here gabriel jesus playing out on this left hand side yes it's a place and a method that he's used to doing but he prefers being a central striker that's why he moved from Manchester City he didn't want to be a winger and yes when needs must but Eddie Nketiah didn't essentially fill himself with glory either he didn't necessarily take his chances there was a moment at the back post where he really should have anticipated a ball coming over the top but he didn't but Karasaka played a little bit deeper and that was to combat the likes of Destiny Odoji and Brennan Johnson clearly instructed by Mikel Arteta to make sure that Johnson didn't get on the ball making sure he was doubling up with the likes of Ben White who I thought had actually quite a good game Fabio Vieira was again quite absent in this game for me it's this problem position for Arsenal that they need to get sorted Kai Havertz is not being able to play there neither is Fabio Vieira and it's this granite Xhaka role this player that has just been such an incremental voice and a real starter in this Arsenal lineup not having him in the side as such a leader and a presence to be able to go forward and make those runs is really starting to hurt them. It's starting to hurt Arsenal where they attack and they're becoming quite one-sided. Martin Odegaard not being able to drift as much as he would like means that there is a lot of owners on this left-hand side. And I do believe that Zinchenko coming inside does help them. But really, this quartet just didn't work out for me. And I thought that Tottenham were actually quite comfortable and Pedro Porro did a fantastic job of marking the quartet in its own right. I thought he did a very good job. On to Tottenham. Let's talk about this because they did a fantastic job once more again Brennan Johnson I thought could have done a little bit better especially for Arsenal's first goal yes it gets deflected yes it's quite fortuitous but still Bakayo Saka dummying both him and Udoji who got a yellow card quite early on I thought they could have done a little bit better than that. James Madison dropping that little bit deep. If we have, actually have a look at his heat map, we can see that he was dropping quite deep to be able to get on the ball and be almost an architect for this Tottenham Hotspur attack. Basuma was the best player on the pitch in my opinion. Without Basuma everything falls apart. I thought he was sensational. He was that link between defence and attack. He was able to drift past players. His touch was brilliant. He was able to take it away from his man that was marking him and then his penetrating passes, his progressive passes through the pitch to find the likes of Papa Matassar, to find the likes of James Madison, even the likes of a Brennan Johnson or an Adoji in certain scenarios. He continuously broke the lines that meant that Arsenal press was almost non-existent and if Basuma is not in this side I really do fear for Tottenham because he was the difference between Tottenham being able to get out and Tottenham being continuously penned in by Arsenal they couldn't have an answer for Basuma they did not know what to do and it was down to this role that Basuma played that allowed Tottenham to progress the ball forwards and higher up the pitch I thought Kulisevsky did a very good job even though I thought he was quite wasteful at times and then Human Son was clinical as ever especially for that second goal once Jorginho was 
displaced and once he was rid of the ball I thought that they did a fantastic job of capitalising on a lot of the moments and a lot of the movements that Arsenal were were giving them they were very very good in the transition and James Madison was very good on Jorginho in that moment let's have a look at some of the stats because I thought that Arsenal looked like the side that should be coming into this as the favourites I know a lot of people thought that Arsenal were going to wipe the floor with Tottenham but that wasn't the case Tottenham stood their ground and I thought they did a very good job two goals expected goals to Tottenham's 1.5 and then you have the possession this will be interesting at the Emirates at home, Arsenal's home, in the North London derby, they had less possession. That's a huge stat. Massive. And it's that 53% that really gave Tottenham the ammunition to be able to go forwards. It gave them a solidity, a foundation to be able to build their plays upon. They had almost the same amount of shots on target. They had the same amount of shots. All of a sudden, we're looking at this game and thinking that it's actually quite even. And if we continue to scroll down, we can see that they both had four big chances. Yes, Arsenal missed three of those, but Tottenham missed two. A very even game. Goalkeeper saves again, very, very even. And then when you're talking about being at the Emirates, at Arsenal's home ground in a derby, Tottenham had more passes. This is a huge, huge statement from Tottenham, and I do not think we need to underestimate or that we can underestimate the importance of what Tottenham have done here. They've gone to the Emirates and they've played Arsenal. They've played them off the park almost in certain scenarios. Yes, it was 2-2, but it could have been more. It could have been different. Arsenal were quite fortuitous. I think Tottenham have made a serious, serious statement here. The game ended Arsenal 2, Tottenham 2. And Spurs did great. Arsenal have some work to do. Let's now have a look at some in-game moments. I thought that Bakaya Saka did a very, very good job of cutting in on his left foot, leaving Brennan Johnson and Odoji for dead. Romero coming in to block the shot, but it just deflects and goes straight in. I thought Bakaya Saka did a fantastic job. I would have liked to see more from Tottenham to try and defend this because you know how good Bakaya Saka is, because you know he wants to go on his left foot. People need to be giving him so much more respect. Moving on from this, let's take a look at James Madison losing the ball against Gabriel Jesus. This is something that Arsenal really set up quite well. You can't see him here, but in your picture, Declan Rice has just sat on the edge. He's waiting with Bakayo Saka and Fabio Vieira. The press is on for Arsenal. Odegaard presses, then Jesus. Vieira's here to mark Basuma, so Madison can't pass away. And all of a sudden, this should have converted into a chance. Jesus moves into the net and then blazes over. But really, this is where Arsenal found a lot of joy. Pressing Tottenham, making sure that it was difficult for them. But the press stopped. Arsenal looked tired. Arsenal looked laboured. Especially in the second half. That's when Spurs were able to really contrive and bring through and thread a lot more passes. Let's continue on. Because when we have a look at David Raya being in goal, it was just a sensational save, wasn't it? Is he the new Arsenal number one? Where is Ramsdale? Is he going to be anywhere near this Arsenal setup again? Is David Raya going to be the main, main man? It remains to be seen. Let's continue. We have James Madison passing to Human Son for the first goal. Remember what I spoke about in the preview with the diagonal runs from Tottenham through into deep. This is where the goal comes from. Human Son actually makes a run diagonally through into the box. James Madison knows this is going to happen and he crosses the ball to that exact position. The ball then goes into the net and it's game on for Spurs. As we can see, moving on, this is the Tottenham second goal. Obviously, Arsenal getting that 2-1 lead due to the penalty, but 46 seconds are, I believe, something around that is within a minute. One minute later, Arsenal end up conceding, and this is something that is completely unforgivable. Jorginho is on the pitch, and he has so much experience, so much time, so much ability on the ball that he needs to be playing a pass. He needs to be aware of the Tottenham press. He's not. And I heard Gary Neville in commentary talk about how Arsenal over-celebrated. They almost thought that the game was won once they went 2-1 up. They thought it was over, but it wasn't. Tottenham have a steal in them. Tottenham have a determination. You can see there is not an Arsenal player in sight in front of Jorginho to be able to play a pass. James Madison and Kim Min Son bearing down on him. And eventually they do get that turnover and it's just heart and mouth stuff for Arsenal. James Madison then playing the ball forward, Hyun Min Son making that run. This is a different Tottenham and it looks to be like the same old Arsenal in terms of mentality, the way they press forwards, pass beautifully weighted for James Madison. 
from James Manishan, I should say, into the path of Hyunmin Son to be able to play that into the bottom corner. Raya can't do anything about it. But really, that is an unforgivable mistake from Arsenal, and they really should be doing so much better. Here's a better bird's eye view of it. There's a pass on here, there's a pass on here, but Jorginho does not play it. Perhaps the jubilation and perhaps the celebration got too much of Arsenal. I don't necessarily think that was the case, but they do need to stay focused. There's an age-old saying that you're most vulnerable to concede a goal once you've just scored, and that was proved evident today. And really, Arsenal need to learn from this, pick themselves up, because they are already four points off of Manchester City. They want to be gunning for a title, but they will not be doing it with mistakes like this. I actually thought that Arsenal were quite good in certain scenarios, but I was mostly impressed by Tottenham and the way that they had a steal, a determination, and an ability to play that kind of football at the Emirates. It was great stuff and a great North London derby. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How did you view the game? Are you happy? Are you sad? And how do you think this fares for both teams going forwards? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, take care.